Welcome back to another episode on b Horror Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look and review on a Japanese RPG that I have been waiting for for a very long time with the release of Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Before we truly get started, I wanted to let you know, the viewers, you know, this game is long in a tooth. And when I mean long, I mean really long. I've captured video I took here from the game for about the first four to five, maybe six hours that I played before I just stopped and just played the rest of the game. Like its previous installments before, from the original Xenoblade Chronicles on Nintendo's Wii, the game mostly is about exploration of a brand new fantasy world while you uncover the very secrets that created it. I love the original and also to a lesser extent enjoyed Xenoblade Chronicles X on the Wii U. I skipped Xenoblade Chronicles 2 since I really didn't have a Switch at the time until the OLED version came out and here I am with my first pre-order of a game for myself since Dragon Age Inquisition. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was developed by Monolith Soft and released by Nintendo in 2022 for the Nintendo Switch. The game itself is an action RPG game with visual designs from Japanese anime with cel shaded visuals that can be taken all to the next degree. The story here revolves around two fighting factions who only want to destroy one another. The soldiers here are born and meant only to fight for about 10 years where if you're able to make the full 10 years, you will turn back into energy that was given to you and will go back to the queen. Every soldier has a different job in their unit or party and train religiously until their day in seemingly unending battles. So they're really after. Oh. Quick thinking, land. Tough guy, but you can't hold out forever! Soon, the story shifts right into the first chapter as both factions are after a secret weapon where the secrets are revealed to be more secrets about the world and themselves. Although hating one another, the main characters from both factions team up to discover the what and the whys and why they have been fighting all this time and what exactly they are truly in for when uncovering those secrets. Although the best part of the game is the story, be ready for lengthy cutscenes like Metal Gear Solid, where there is exploration, a long cutscene, a battle, and a long cutscene again will occur consistently till the very end. The dialogue is wonderfully dubbed, as I found it easier to deal with than playing with Japanese sound. The voices are well done, and the writing here will, will let you begin to love each and every character. But since I don't understand Japanese, even though I love the sound of it, it's better dubbed as when you travel the world, your attention is definitely elsewhere while you listen and transverse. When reading becomes that much more of a chore. The music here and sound is wonderful. I can listen to some of the melodies over and over again with this emotional impact woven into the story with its dramatic scenes and so much more. While you travel, and you will travel, the music is something that you can rely on being fantastically scored and well done throughout your journey.
the battle system here is really intuitive and you can really dive in as they are all automatic as you can change characters you basically control what type of attacks strategy fusion of the characters magic and so much more the game does a great job in training you on what to do and how to do it in the battle and when is the best chance for survival. You can battle almost anywhere and anyone, but be careful. Even when you feel like you're on top of the world, there will always be enemies to take you down and pay very quickly. The worst time in the battle, as intuitive as it is, is the constant bickering between squad mates as they constantly repeat phrases over and over again after a victory that can really get boring after the first chapter. And I was the MVP. You were all thinking it. The visuals here are really something to behold. Yes, the Switch is definitely underpowered when it comes to the PS5 or the Xbox Series X. But what we have here is design. And boy, is the design of this fantasy world really something to behold. The detail presented, while not super crisp, shows that the visuals can hold up to next-gen titles. You're an Oxyus from Agnes, right? What the? So you are then. Why are you fighting me? Uh, as if you can talk. You're the ones attacking us. What? Too scared to fight now? Too late. The eyes of the characters and the movement of the hair are so lifelike, the game oozes with personality that you really enjoy watching this game over and over. I myself play the game in a docked mode as the visuals jump out even further with sound in comparison to the portable version. But I always prefer the docked format for most games, so don't take my word for it. This singular game truly brought back that love for Japanese RPGs that I truly enjoyed almost every part of it. If there was any con, I do believe that it's the length where 80 hours is a story alone and 100 plus more is what you would do on your side quests, which are equally relevant to the story as well. This game truly holds its own and being one of the best in the series so far. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 gets a 9.0 out of 10 for its wonderful story and journey that will never let you down, that will keep you playing on and on and on, not knowing how much time you really spent until the very end. The game is a must for any RPG fan, and especially for those craving for a good old fashioned, up to date Japanese RPG. That's it for this review on my RPG game of the year so far, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos, be ho out and great. Take us out of here, and I will see you all next upload. Damn. Uh. Yeah.